Alright guys, Red here. Today we're going to be going over some of the leaked patch notes from 3.22. 3.22 is still in Evil Kai and somebody has graciously put these up on the Pipeline SC Discord. Before that though, Captain Aria Riley has been having a little chat with Sylvan, one of the graphics programmers for Star Citizen, who's currently working on the Gen 12 and Vulcan implementation. They were able to answer a few questions, and they also gave permission to post the answers. So the first question was, how will 3.22's cloud tech upgrades affect performance? The answer was, the new system in 3.22 uses temporal upscaling and quarter scale rendering, which is the same technique as Microsoft Flight Simulator, which should improve the efficiency and performance overall. That is a, is a well needed feature in the game. Personally, I don't like the clouds as they are at the minute. I don't like that graininess sort of look to them and the performance is just ridiculously bad. And in most cases, unless it's for like a screenshot or something, I just completely turn the clouds off altogether. Currently at least, I would love to have them enabled though. But right now they just look bad and perform bad so they get chopped. Will the upgrade to Vulcan result in a higher planet-side object density? The answer was, this is actually not too related to Vulcan, but as performance improves our artists will inevitably add more to the game. Scattering will be improved once the GPU scattering comes in. Next question, how will Vulcan affect performance in general? If you're CPU bound, it should be an improvement. Not so much if you're GPU bound. DLSS, FSR, CIG TSR, which is Cloud Imperium's own version of an upscale anti-alias technology. All of these technologies will help in that scenario. So Vulcan is looking like it will only primarily lift some of the weight away from the CPU, which to be fair is half the reason that we see performance loss at any given time anyway. So that's definitely a bonus and if you add into that DLSS or FSR or whatever this other thing is like we could be looking at a decently performant game in the not too near future but I should definitely point out this doesn't mean that this is coming in 3.22 probably not it probably won't appear until further down the line is there any insight into what's preventing the fancy new render features from coming into the game via the tech preview channel? The answer is they're just not ready for the public eye. We don't want to put out stuff that isn't polished. I mean, I get that. That's fair enough. Could have filled me. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. We'll get it when it's ready. That's, that's the best way. It always has been. Is there a possibility for a UE as an Unreal Engine nanite-like system for Star Citizen. Answer, this would require a complete rework of all the assets in the game, don't expect it. Are there any plans to address planetary popping? No major plans at the moment, though the aforementioned GPU scattering should help. We'll also try and make sure stuff fades in smoothly rather than popping into existence. And that was all that was allowed to be published on that particular conversation. But there was some little factoids in there that might shine a light on some of the things going on behind the curtain, so I thought I would add it to this video anyway. So, on to the 3.22 stuff that's in testing in Evil Catty right now. First off, we've got player hair update, which if you've seen Citizen Con, you will already know. There's a hair update, it looks fucking awesome. It's going to be great to have. It's not exactly my top tier most wanted feature, but it's, you know, it's a feature. I love features. More features the better, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's some new derelict settlements. I'm not sure if we've seen these ones before over the last year. It could be, but I've not had the time to go and pin them down. Some structural salvage is looking like it's in. And that means the grabbing and the cutting up of the superstructure of ships and stuff like that. I am not too sure if that is actually functional though at the moment. Possibly, but just on a very limited scale. But remember, this is just the first, very first implementation. And there may be other things needing tested with more priority. Openable cargo containers. Now this, this is really exciting. 
I know I sound really sad here, but <laughs> opening cargo containers is something that I've wanted for quite a long time. Mainly because of the raft. I just want to be able to use the raft in any meaningful way. And this is it. We can now open cargo containers. I'm not exactly sure how that will work, if it'll just be like a, a menu interface, or if it'll physically open and you'll have to place boxes and guns and whatever inside. I'm not really sure, I don't even care, I, I would prefer the second way, but I'll take anything. Uh, some new maps have been added to Arena Commander, Multi Crew, and some new game modes may all be implemented in a partial state. And no doubt as the days go by we'll probably hear more about this. This next one is... it's a big one. It is possible. Possible. That the address is in with its interior. Now, <laughs> before you get carried away, it's possible that the address is in with its interior and possibly textures. But we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, that is... That's big news, that's big news right there. I'm guessing that means that progress is being made on the address and every now and then we'll get a little update to the end game one that we can fight and no doubt there'll be players able to access that and get the whole tour before it ever releases. So that's cool as hell and I can't wait to get in there for a little sneak peek. Okay, uh, reputation for items. Um, it appears like there's items appeared in the game that you cannot buy unless you have a set reputation amount. Now I'm not too sure what this is, but I'm guessing it's like to do with factions, maybe certain weapons, certain armors, maybe even certain ship components. I'm not entirely sure. It's all just speculation at this point, but Either way, that's exciting stuff, that's a, a good shift for the game generally. So it'll be really cool to see how this gets implemented. And it would be really awesome if there was quite a lot of items, possibly rare items, behind those kind of reputation barriers in the future. Hopefully. Hopefully it's a, definitely a step in the right direction, as far as I'm concerned. Jumptown Drug Labs are changing location. So Jumptown on Yela is moving to Daymar, Paradise Cove on Lyria is moving to Walla, Raven's Roost on Calliope is moving to Microtech. What do you make of that? I mean, personally, that's... I'm fine with that. that. That mixes things up a bit. I don't know why they didn't just add more drug labs and move the location around, but... Whatever. There must be a reason. I'm sure it'll make sense. Somehow. But it'll definitely mix things up a bit, so I'm all for it. New Xi'an ship weapons. The item description is a TOAG laser repeater. TOAG. So the manufacturer is Toro Aggregate. So TOAG is just short for that. It's inspired by Xi'an Maltech and tailored made by Toro Aggregate exclusively for the Apoa Santok Yai. The Yang 2 laser repeater accentuates the ship's dexterity with a fighter's edge. New alien weapons inbound. Doesn't get any more crazy than that. This is the good leaks right here. This is the good stuff. <laughs> Citizen Con goodies. So the multi-tool box. Proudly put your multi-tool on display with this toolbox. Reclaimed from the pyro system. That's not only withstood the star's dangerous flares. But also the ravages of time. Okay, that sounds cool. I have no idea what this looks like. I remember it was supposed to be getting made while Citizen Con was on. I've never seen anything about it after that though. And I also have no idea why you would want to carry your, you know, multi-tool around in a box. But maybe for storing it in your hangar that would be cool. Or displaying it in your hangar. Who knows. Uh, more flair, the Headhunter Relic, Citizen Con 2023. Light your way with this reproduction of the iconic Headhunter Seal of Authority. Crafted at the promotion of a new chief, this lamp is constructed using four skulls, one provided by each of the chief's four counsellors, as a sign of their loyalty and serves as a symbol of the chief's new authority. There you go, Headhunter Relic. I'm guessing that's possibly still part of the Citizen Con gift 
pack thing, whatever it was. There's also a trophy here, commemorates CitizenCon 2953 with a trip to the dark side, with this unique trophy fashioned from debris extracted from the dangerous pyro system. So yeah, if you bought the CitizenCon pack, looks like you've got your flare coming soon. Yeah, there's some stuff here about the Arena Commander Lobby, UI front end stuff, it's like a ban player, demote from mod, host, promote to host, promote to mod. Just your usual multiplayer type stuff. Probably some pretty good quality of life changes there, to be honest. New cargo crates. Designed from one of the most trusted names in cargo pods, the Storall Self Storage Container provides a convenient place to keep anything too cumbersome to carry on your person. Its durable, impact resistant construction is sealed to survive the vacuum of space. And it's looking like we're getting a 1 SCU box, a 2 SCU box, a 4 SCU box, and an 8 SCU box. I'm pretty sure they mentioned that we were getting um, like gun storage boxes and stuff like that as well. That's definitely not here, I don't think. But I'd keep your eye out for that as well. There is also mention of the Grey Cat Cab, a new small ground vehicle like the STV. And this is an interesting one because we did see some vehicles at CitizenCon, didn't we? Some ground vehicles, I think it was like for handling cargo, maybe? I'm not too sure, maybe it's that. I could be wrong about that. Um, probably am wrong about that. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's looking like there's some salvage changes as well. The salvage printers now hold RMC and construction components in a buffer. This is for the crafting stuff that you can do on the Vulture and the Reclaimer. The Vulture has a 14 SCU buffer, while the Reclaimer has a 720 SCU buffer. The Reclaimer's printer can now dispense larger boxes. Oh, that's nice. I suppose you have to move the box less, so that's good. Hull munching harvested as construction components. It can be activated in the Vulture using Alt-W keys and it's activated in the Reclaimer using the Co-Pilot seat. But the claw is currently broken. It's a relatively quick process where the player uses a fracturing beam to break apart the ship and seemingly only one break is necessary. Unknown if larger ships require more. After this, the player can absorb the smaller pieces in a sort of vacuum way that's kind of similar to mining. Also, the animation for the deconstruction is likely not final. It is said that currently, these Evocati servers are absolutely and utterly not stable by any stretch of the imagination. But hopefully that will give you guys a good idea of what's to come, possibly before Christmas, we're thinking. So yep, lots to look forward to, lots of testing to do. Let's hope that the Evocati guys get the bug reports filled in, things get ironed out, and hopefully we'll have all munching in our hands before Luminalia. Before I go, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreons, Laura Spence and channel members, No Scare Days. Thank you guys for all your support. It is very much appreciated. If you're looking to get into Star Citizen, please use one of the codes on the screen now. The screenshot in the background right now is something No sent me. It's, um, it's from IEE and it's just an absolute Star Citizen moment to be honest. I don't know if it's a joke or not, I'm guessing it's a joke, but yeah, sums things up really, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, that's all for me, remember to tune in next time for some more Star Citizen news delivered straight to your mobile glass feed. 07 guys. <laughs>